Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at using plasticity on a laptop. Now, this is something that comes up in the comments quite a bit. People don't like the way that plasticity works on a laptop. They have problems with the trackpad. So today we're going to try to cover that, some basic preferences and settings, way to configure your shortcuts, and hopefully get you a way that you can use a laptop a little bit easier. Now, keep in mind that I do 99.9% .9 of CAD work on a desktop machine. Whenever I'm using a laptop for any sort of CAD work, I make sure that I bring at least a mouse with me because I just hate to use a trackpad. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that we don't have a mouse. There's no peripherals here. We're just going to use what we have in front of us. Um, also note that this is a CAD laptop, so I do have a bigger keyboard. I do have a numpad but we're gonna assume that we don't have a numpad and we're gonna focus on how we can configure just a sort of minimal keyboard and how we can make that work for us. So first things first, we wanna get started by taking a look at our preferences. When we go into preferences, there is a navigation section that has a touchpad. Now I'm gonna talk about both the plasticity default and the touchpad settings. I actually do not like to use the touchpad settings and we'll, we'll sort of walk through that first. And then we're gonna go into the plasticity defaults and then we're gonna look at how that works a bit better. But let's start with the touchpad. That's gonna to be the first place that most laptop users are gonna go, turn that on. And I would imagine that based on your specific system, the touchpad settings may work a bit different. But let's just talk about the basics here. Now, if you happen to have a laptop like this, this is a, uh, a Dell ThinkPad that has one of these sort of little navigator things in the center, just pretend that it's not there. Don't use it. Because if you try to use that, let's say the middle mouse button and just try to rotate around, it's so sensitive that it just goes completely wild. You wanna use a middle mouse button and sort of rotate this around. Now, if you have a trackpad that doesn't have a middle mouse button or doesn't have a set of mouse buttons, and you generally would do like a, a double click on the left side or the right side, that is gonna be a problem. 100% that's gonna be a problem. Now, most of the laptops that I've used will have the buttons underneath the corners of the trackpad. So you should still have access to a left and a right button, but you really do need that middle mouse button to be able to free orbit. If you take two fingers on the trackpad and you push them up or down, you're gonna rotate about a horizontal axis on the screen. If you rotate them left and right, you're gonna be rotating about the Z axis or a vertical axis. So you do have the ability to do this sort of constrained orbit if you want, but it is gonna be much easier if you can use a middle mouse button and sort of rotate things around. Now, there is no direct configuration like a shortcut key that you can set for the middle mouse button. There's probably something that you can do in the system settings in your computer, but for the most part, you will want to at least have this. And this is why I say that really you should focus on bringing a mouse with you. You can get a, you know, a simple cheap wireless mouse for a couple dollars now at pretty much everywhere. Uh, they're not gonna be good or fun to use, but it will simplify the process and you don't have to worry about this stuff. And what I would also say is I have not found a good way to zoom in and zoom out. It basically goes to full extents. So when I do this, if I happen to have to use a laptop, make sure that you use the forward slash and that will zoom to fit your object. And if we happen to create another object, let's say that we've got a sphere over here and we accept that and we hit the forward slash, it's gonna zoom to fit everything on it. And if we use the period key on anything that's selected, then it's gonna isolate it. And again, the slash will zoom to your selected object and zoom back out. Um, or if you don't have anything selected, it'll zoom to fit anything that's currently visible in your scene. So if you are trying to use the trackpad setup, make sure that you are familiar with the forward slash to zoom and that you do at least have access to a mouse button here. It does not work the same. The right mouse button, left mouse button don't really do any navigation. It's just the middle mouse button and moving it around. We'll talk about configuring shortcuts in just a second, but I wanna go back to my preferences and I'm gonna reset my navigation preferences to plasticity default. Now, the reason I say this is because I actually find that this works a bit better on the trackpad. The middle mouse button is still free orbit. The right mouse button is pan, which is something that's kind of tough to do when you have it set on trackpad. And if I move my fingers up and down, so two fingers on the trackpad, it does a pretty nice zoom in and zoom out. 
unlike trying to take two fingers and spread them apart or bring them together like you would on most touch screens, uh, this actually works pretty well to zoom in and out. So we have the ability to pan, we have the ability to free rotate, and we can zoom in and out pretty easily. So again, every laptop's gonna be a little bit different. This one here, again, it's a, it's a Dell Precision laptop. It was a specific CAD laptop. So I do have numpads. I do have a couple of different uh, sort of trackpad and mouse options. Not all laptops are gonna have these, but if you use a, a traditional mouse, that should simplify things quite a bit. So let's talk a little bit about configuring shortcuts because that's another big question I get for laptops that don't have access to the numpad. So the numpad, one is the front view, uh, control and one is the back view, three is a right view, control three is le uh, left view, seven is top, control seven is bottom, and then five is perspective and ortho mode. So we can sort of toggle back and forth between these. Now you can also go up to your right hand corner and you can click on say Z or the top of the cube if you need to go to those views, but you still wanna be able to sort of configure these shortcuts. So the easiest thing to do is type in F to find and start to type in view. This is gonna bring up all of your view shortcuts. So for example, navigate to front is numpad one. We're gonna right click here and I'm gonna assign a shortcut to be zero on the numbers at the top. For uh, navigate to right, instead of numpad three, I'm gonna assign a shortcut. I'm gonna set that to nine. And then let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. And for top, I'm gonna assign a shortcut and I'm gonna set that to eight. So what we're gonna do here is we can just use eight, nine, and zero now to go to those defaults you would need to set up the sort of opposite of it. So control and zero, control and nine and control and eight, but that will help with the navigation a little bit. Um, if I have something selected, we can also use uh, the space bar. That's going to go back to that last plane. That will allow us to, for example, select the top face and create a temporary construction plane. All that works the same as it does with any other desktop machine. And just like every other sort of navigation tool is with the exception of anything that you have on the numpad, everything else should still work the same. When we're talking about some of the navigation options, uh, remember that you can always come up here as well. So perspective ortho is numpad five, but Honestly, you can just come up and click on it. You don't have to configure a specific shortcut. I do use that when I'm trying to visualize things. Uh, so I might toggle back and forth between it. But for the most part, just coming up here to click on it is pretty easy as well. So that's sort of the basic setup. If you are using a laptop that doesn't have buttons with the trackpad, that does make things quite a bit difficult. Uh, it's a little different because you don't have access to those. but just getting a small mouse that you can use for that navigation instead of just having that, uh, that trackpad, that should help. But if you do have a laptop with a trackpad that does have the buttons like this one does and like a lot of them do, then that should really help you uh, get set up. But I would suggest that you do go into your preferences and at least try the trackpad setting to see if that works for you. But for the most part, I found the plasticity default, at least on this laptop, gives me better navigation than the trackpad one does. Now, if you do also use a space mouse, um, I don't use one anymore. I, I actually prefer not to use it. But if you do use one, then you can take that with you as well. And with the traditional mouse and a space mouse or 3D mouse, then you can get away from some of those sort of navigation panes that you have. And all the rest of it can be configured shortcuts so you don't have to worry about not having a numpad. So that's the basic process. Uh, if there's anything else you wanna see or any other questions on Plasticity, please let me know. Remember, if you're looking to purchase Plasticity, we are an affiliate, so you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout. That'll get you 10% off and it does help out the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.